All right, gang, going into this part two of our surreal scene animation uh, utilizing Pixlr and Wick Editor. And let's just take a quick look at what we're going to create now that we have created a series of um, graphics. Well, actually, we are about to create the series of graphics, of PNG graphics that we can use in this Wick Editor animation. So where we left off is we created this surreal scene here. And let's just go ahead and save each layer as a PNG, right? So I'm going to turn off the visibility on each of the layers except for one. So I'll leave this bottom one open. Um, and what I'll do really quick is actually it will crop the space so that there isn't a whole ton of extra space around each one of these images. I'm just going to crop them down and then I'm going to undo it after I save it. So I cropped it a little bit and now I'm going to go File, Save. And maybe I'll call this Surreal Scene 1 and then click Download. And make sure you have the PNG as the file type selected. All right, and once this is good, we say close. I'm going to then undo that crop, right? So in, you could either do it in your history. I could just go back a step, or you could hit Command Z. Either way, I just wanted to go back. And now I'm going to turn on the visibility of my door layer. Now this one, I want to make sure that I turn off the image layer underneath. So I want this transparency right in the opening. So now again, I'm just going to go File, Save, choose PNG, and call this Surreal Scene 2. Hit Download. Wait a couple of seconds, and then I close this little window here. All right, and so on upwards to the giraffe image. Again, I'm going to crop this one a little bit. So just so the area around it isn't way too big, bigger than it needs to be. I'll hit apply, and then we'll go file save again. PNG, surreal scene. This will be number three. We'll say download. And moving on to the last and final layer, we'll turn off visibility here. Actually, I need to undo the cropping. Go back here. I will then turn on this last layer. And let's see, I might just look at one thing here because I do realize now I might have cropped a little bit extra of this uh, cactus off there. Yeah, it looked like I wanted to add that little bit back on with my cutout masking tool and just make this a little bit smoother of a curve. Cool, that works. So uh, let's save this one as well. So we'll go file save, PNG, we'll call this Surreal Scene 4. And now we have all four of our layers, uh, graphics, ready to go. So once this gets out of the way, we could close it. We'll jump back into Wick Editor. I will start a new project. We'll go ahead and click Create. And now for this new project here, let's go ahead and start by setting up our layers. So I'll just hit this layer, uh, add layer button three times so that I have four layers in here. Um, and then we'll upload our assets. And so if you're using Google Chrome, you might be able to add assets this way. No, nope, don't think so. It's going to want us to click on this upload asset button. Um, we want surreal scene one, and then we want two. Oh, it looks like I saved two of them as Surreal Scene 1, but I know this is one. This is the first one. This is going to be the uh, clouds in the background. And then I want Surreal Scene 2, which would be this one. And then we'll take 3 and 4. If I hold Shift and click on multiple, it will let me select all of them and do them all at once. So now I just want to drag them into where they need to go. So first click on these first frames of each of these layers so that there's landing spots for these. Layer four, we can title these. I'm gonna call sky, and I just want to drag Surreal Scene 1 onto that layer there for layer four. And I'm gonna hold shift and click and drag to make this uh, smaller and smaller. The other thing we're going to want with this is you're actually going to want two of these if we want to make a looping animation. So while I'm at it right now, I'm just going to hit Command C and then Command V to paste this scene a second time over here. And we want to make sure that they overlap just a little bit and make sure that they line up. I'm just nudging with my arrow keys on my keyboard 
make sure that they line up pretty good and that they overlap a little bit. You don't want to see a white space um, in between them where you can see a break in the line. Now I'm going to hold shift and click on both of these and then make them a clip so that they bind together. All right. Um, now let's move on up to layer three. So here's where we're going to take Surreal Scene 2. This is the doorway and we're going to bring that in here. You can see that we can see through it, although it is really big. And again, I'm going to hold shift and click and drag on the corner. All right. As I get this scene down into place, I may play around with the transparency really quick. Um, if I turn the transparency down, I can see where the edges of my frame are. And that helps because I can make sure that um, everything is centered and the doorway is in there and you'll be able to see everything um, when we play this animation at the end. All right, so I'll turn the opacity back up and there we go. So uh, layer three is the doorway. I'm just gonna change this name up really quick. Doorway. Now let's go on up layer two. Oops, the layers looks like they skipped orders. We want the sky all the way down. Layer two, oops, I'm not sure why these keep jumping, is gonna be where I bring in the draft. All right, so just clicking and dragging, bringing him onto layer two. Make sure each one of these graphics goes on their own layer. All right, we're gonna start with him over on the right side maybe and I'll title his layer, click on where it says layer two over here, and we'll call this a giraffe, and hit enter. And then the last layer, so Surreal Scene 4, we wanna bring this scene in here for our foreground, and just holding shift, clicking and dragging on the corners are gonna let us get this to the right size. All right. And that's looking pretty good. I do want this to go maybe a little bit lower so I can see a little bit of the doorway floor right there. Um, maybe I'll move it down even lower. So maybe, and maybe even make it bigger. Let's see if I make it bigger, maybe I can move the cactus off the side so it's not in front of the door so much. So maybe I will enlarge this just a little bit change it up from the way it's set up in my, you know, Pixlr document, but that's okay. Not too much wrong with doing that. All right. So positioning wise, this seems pretty good. Um, and now all I want to do is add the movement in, right? So let's add, uh, just want to name this one desert. So I know which layer is which. I'm going to expand some frames. Let's get this rid of this little window here. Um, let's expand these frames. So like I said, I'm just going to click drag and make these about 40 or so frames. It's going to be a relatively short animation at 12 frames per second. Uh, you know, just under four second animation here. Just a quick GIF that will repeat on a loop. Let's see, I have all these frames expanded and we're gonna add a couple tweens. So we'll just go over adding a tween or adding movement here. And so first tween I will add is with the sky. Let's, I think in order to do this, we're going to wanna lock all our layers. So we're gonna click on this little lock button here on each of these layers, except for our bottom layer, the sky. So now what we're gonna do is add a tween for the sky. So make sure your red uh, marker is right here above the first frame. We're gonna add a tween at the beginning and then add another tween button at the end. And now all I wanna do is just click and drag this scene over. Now here, wait, I'm gonna undo that. I wanna kind of watch where my cloud shapes are here because I want them to match again when they come over here from the original image. So as I kind of move this, and I'm just holding shift and then pressing my arrow key to move this over in jumps, I kinda of wanna watch the shape through the window and like I said, go past this edge here, because I know that's kind of the edge of the clouds, which is a little funny that you see the edge of the image, but not too much. We are looking at a pretty surreal scene here. And I know that I'm trying to get just this curve of cloud there, just like it was in the first frame, because when I play this, it will loop as it will kind of create that illusion that it just keeps on going, right? Just the clouds just keep moving. So that will work good. Um, and let's add another tween in here just for our giraffe, kind of make him mosey around behind these mountains. So if I'm gonna add a tween for this giraffe, I'll hit add tween. 
um, I'm gonna make him go down and then turn around and come back out to the other side. So I'm gonna add another tween stop in the middle here. And then I'll just take this giraffe and, whoops, I forgot I had him locked. So I gotta unlock my giraffe and we'll lock the sky layer to keep that locked. And then all I'm gonna do is just move this giraffe um, down underneath the mountains here, let's see. Um, and you'll see that that tween then makes him kind of move back, right? Now, if I want to maybe skip one frame and put a new start point, and then I'll turn him around and have him come back out. Um, let's see, let's make this desert disappear for a second. So if I hit the button next to the lock layer, I can hide a layer. I want to take this giraffe, I want to flip him. So I'm going to go to canvas actions, and I want to go right here to flip horizontal. Oops, I think I have to have my giraffe selected first. Flip him horizontally. And then, like I was saying, I'm gonna go back to the, I'm gonna to go to the end of my animation here. I'm gonna hit this dino one more time, and then I'll drag the giraffe back on up off the side of the stage. Let's show the visibility on this uh, desert layer again. I'll just kind of watch this scene sort of play out, right? So you got a pretty surreal animation going on here with this indoor desert where you have a giraffe kind of moseying around in some mountains and clouds going on through the door of the room that we're in, this surreal scene going on here, right? So once we're finished here, we just want to export this as a GIF. Uh, always save your WIC files as well. I will call this surreal scene. And we'll hit export GIF. And that will export a GIF to your downloads folder which we should then make sure you save and check out and share on Classroom for all to enjoy. So that's it for this video lesson for computer animation. Hope you guys have luck and fun creating your own creations.